Conference USA could be a multi-bit league this season thanks to the UAB Blazers, who are feeling great right now, but it is a tall task tonight in enemy territory. Dental Arena against Western Kentucky. Conference USA class for you tonight on CBS Sports Network as UAB tries to notch another resume-building road win at Western Kentucky. With Mike O'Donnell, I'm Chris Hassel. Look, th this is not going to be a quad one, maybe not even a quad two win if UAB gets it, but make no mistake, in this atmosphere against this talented team, it's quad one difficulty tonight for the Blazers. Especially with this atmosphere, there's no question, West Kentucky, they might be the best 10 and nine team in the country. UAB, if the season ended tonight, they'd be in as an at-large team. When you're filling out your bracket, this isn't just a UAB team that can get in the tournament, they can advance, they're that good. And with the way Jordan Jelly walks is playing right now anything is possible this is a guy coming off back-to-back -back conference usa player of the week performances back-to-back -back career games walker hit nine threes yes nine threes in the win at louisiana tech he's top five in conference usa in points assists and made threes jordan walker's turning into a star six nba scouts here tonight many of them to see jelly walker firsthand for western kentucky they've lost three straight but the straw that stirs the drink for them, win or defeat, Davion McKnight, super sophomore, so great. Love watching Davion McKnight in film. He's shifty with elite vision. And I say elite vision because he's top five in the country in total assists. Coach Stansbury called him the most mentally consistent player I have ever coached. Davion McKnight is tough. And it is tough to win here in Dental Arena. Probably the toughest road game remaining for UAB against a Hilltopper team looking to get its season back on track. Toppers and Blazers next. First game of our basketball doubleheader tonight. After this, we've got number two Gonzaga hosting Loyola Marymount, but right now, it's a key battle in Conference USA play between the Blazers and Hilltoppers. We talked about Jelly Walker, but Quan Jackson is the key on defense for UAB. Top 10 in the nation in steals per game, averages about two and a half. And I think we just set the record about four past the top of the hour, longest any announced crew has ever gone at a Jamari on Sharp game to say that we have the tallest player in college basketball this season, Sharp at seven foot five. For Rick Stansbury's club, Three consecutive losses. They got swept down in South Florida. A lot of heartbreaking defeats this season. They're an eyelash away, a few bounces away from being 15 and four, according to Andy Kennedy, who's in his second season at his alma mater. And an all important one here tonight in his 50th game as the head coach of the Blazers. It's a blackout, so Western Kentucky wearing black uniforms, color on color, UAB in the road green. And we've got a couple seven footers Going at it for the tip. Sharp on the left, Trey Jemison on the right for UAB. And as he always does, the seven foot five Sharp wins the tip. And this is Davion McKnight throwing it up for Sharp. They get a body on him. Sharp able to grab it. And now goes to the floor. It's ripped out of there. And they always try to get Sharp going early as we look at Mike's keys to the game. UAB has to value every possession. West Kentucky wants to slow it down. Then you have to make the winning play in the paint against seven foot five, Jamari and Sharp. Western Kentucky, keep your composure versus the pressure. You know it's coming, stay patient, analyze it, and then you have to slow down Jordan Walker. He is the key. You want to keep him under 15 points in this game. Well, that's something you can't have. UAB is going to force you into a bunch of turnovers. That was unforced as McKnight lost it he was going to go up for a mid-range jump shot. He is one of the best in college basketball at the mid-range. And we were wondering what kind of defense we'd see from the Hilltoppers. There's a little bit of a zone. It's more of a box and one on Jordan Walker. McKnight is just shading Walker the whole time. Everybody else is in zone. K.J. Buffin, the transfer from Ole Miss, who does the dirty work, gets the scoring going here one minute in. Blazers with a 2-0 lead. 
Western Kentucky 10 and 9 this season, but they're 9 and 2 at home. Look how far out UAB pushes Western Kentucky's offense. And now the shot clock down to 7. Cameron Justice baseline. He lost it. And that's UAB basketball back to back turnovers with a bucket in between. Just a little bit of a junk defense from UAB. Done. Did a really nice job getting the ball into the paint. Excuse me, a little junk defense from Western Kentucky. Doing a nice job getting the ball into the paint area against that junk zone. They did it a second time. Yeah, same exact thing. This time, Buffett misses. That was Jarius Hamilton who hit the deck for Western Kentucky, but he's got it top of the key. They want him to do more inside scoring. He's really been up and down this season. Averages 14 points a game, but there are nights where he struggles to get to five. Sharp got tangled up there and a foul called on K.J. Buffett. They want him rebounding more. We're talking about Hamilton here, to your point. They really want him getting dirty around the rim, playing physical and aggressive. And Well, Mike, one of your keys was for UAB to get a body on Sharp. Well, they need Listen to you. on the offensive end, you know, when you when you go into the body of a 7'5 player, you take away his vision. You need to do that, force him to foul. Night. It looks like a, a low percentage mid-range shot. You don't see much of that in the NBA, but Davion McKnight is great at that. That's where the majority of Western Kentucky's offense has come from the last three games. That one a brick off the hand of Quad Jackson, but the putback from Jemison. Trey Jemison. You can see the emotion he plays with. Coach Kennedy calls him. He is our vocal leader, our emotional leader. Amber Justice curls out a three. Rick Stansbury says, the way this team is built, we have to hit threes. They did not do that. Their last home game, a tight loss to North Texas. Western didn't hit its first three until only three minutes left in the game. Watch Davion McKnight, number 20 for Western Kentucky. He's face guarding Jordan Walker. Everybody else is in a zone. And Walker with the bounce baseline. Jackson a jump hook. No good. Rebound Hamilton. There you go. That's what Rick Stansbury wants to see more of. He said, I'm looking at box scores. Hamilton has one rebound, has two rebounds. That cannot happen. He has the intelligence, the strength, and the athleticism to be a guy who gets seven to eight rebounds a game if he wanted to. He's still trying to figure out how to be that guy for Coach Stansbury. Well, K.J. Buffin has two fouls already, and he hits the bench. But the scary thing about this UAB team, they're so deep that it's okay if Buffin sits out for seven, eight minutes. And that is something Western Kentucky is not, not deep at all. Cameron Justice does a great job getting good position, and it's the first points of the game for the toppers. That was pretty good defense by Quan Jackson, playing without fouling. He didn't go for the pump fake, just a better offensive play by Justice. And into the paint once again. And maybe Josh LeBlanc should have taken that himself. It was out of bounds off of Western Kentucky. It's UAB ball, 11 on the clock. This is good defense by Jackson. Playing hard without fouling, going straight up. Just a better, heady play by Cameron Justice. Tough to stop anybody when they get that kind of position down low, too. Good way to get to the spot. There's Walker using the pump fake. Missed everything. And Western Kentucky clears. Tried to feed it down to Hamilton, and it's stolen away. Walker, pull up transition three, off the mark. And Jamari on sharp skies for the board. Knocked out of bounds, 16-01 to play. Western Kentucky ball. Andy Kennedy wanted to restore this program to the heights it was at in the great Gene Bardo days. The coach that Andy Kennedy played for. What a job he's doing of that right now. They've got a net of 38 coming into tonight. And he wants to reestablish the Bartow standard, competing and winning for championships, and wants to be relevant in three areas, on campus, in the, in the city of Birmingham, and nationally. There's Lovin driving to the free throw line. His 14-footer splashes through. So Western Kentucky's doing a good job 
of not giving Jordan Walker any clean looks. But what they're not doing is they're not keeping the ball out of the paint area. Every single possession so far for UAB, the ball has gotten into the paint against that junk zone. Luke Frampton, a three-point sharpshooter. McKnight, not really a three-point threat at this point. He usually goes to that 13 to 17 foot jump shot. And Mike, that, that's the next step that Coach Stansbury wants him to take, is developing that three. But he's top 60 in the country when you're talking 15 to 17 feet mid-range jumper. He's got a 57% chance of getting a bucket in the mid-range, but he cannot shoot the three consistently yet. Taven Lovin missed the three, but an offensive rebound for UAB. And now Jackson will take it and make it. And UAB is the best in the conference at offensive rebounding. They rebound one out of every three misses. And Western Kentucky is not a great rebounding team. It's because of not just Sharp, if he's out of position, they just don't have a lot of rebounders on this squad. And a cold shooting start for the Hilltoppers, just one of seven from the floor. Lovin takes it to that sweet spot again. And that's out of bounds off of Jemison. It'll be Western Kentucky basketball. UAB handling it pretty well in EA Dental Arena, making the off the defense work, passing around Quan Jackson, Jackson when he's making threes. Look out. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. And by Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. So many players in this game tonight were playing somewhere else in college last season, like Jamarion Sharp at John A. Logan College. And UAB is getting more than half of its scoring from transfers this season. Andy Kennedy did a huge cleanup job at the transfer portal. Uh, John Rothstein said no one worked harder in the transfer portal than Andy Kennedy. Anything less than an NCAA tournament would be a disappointment for John Rothstein. And he hit the transfer portal hard. And it's been the perfect combination of you've got transfers coming in, that fits your style, and returning players that have sacrificed maybe some scoring like Michael Ertl to being more of a star role player off the bench. Off to a good start tonight. 8-2 lead here at Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers just one of seven from the floor and dealing with the full court pressure. Hilltoppers broke that really well. You expect to see a lot of full court pressure from the Blazers. That's their calling card. Third in the nation in steals because of that press. Here's Josh Anderson. He's been delivering some offense of late for Western Kentucky, but now one of eight from the floor to start this game. And this is a Western Kentucky team that just, I'm not gonna say they can't come back because they have fallen in holes and come back this season, but they, they've come back, spent a lot of energy coming back and then fell just short like they did last week over the weekend against FIU, falling down 10 nothing as Michael Ertl drills the three, something he did not do last season. The idea defensively for the Hilltoppers is don't let Jordan Walker get going. It's a diamond and one junk defense to prevent Walker from scoring. Jemison with a stuff, but a foul before that block as Josh Anderson takes it aggressively to the hoop. But, but UAB's offense has just been better as you take a look at that's a tough drive. There's a little bit of body contact. I'm okay with that call. Yeah, it was uh, LeBlanc who reached in and picked up that foul. And two shots coming for the great free throw shooter, Josh Anderson, 83% on the season. Hey, we got Friday night hockey coming up. Number 16, Omaha, visiting Colorado College tomorrow, 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Anderson hits both free throws. It's now a seven-point deficit. Now, I want you to follow Davion McKnight, number 20 for West Kentucky. He's going to do his best to follow Jordan Walker and just face guard him. He's not worried about any other player other than Jordan Walker. Juan Jackson again to that free throw line off the mark. 
Luke Frampton chases down the rebound. They haven't done a bad job defensively on UAB. Just haven't been able to manufacture points. Luke Frampton, the sharpshooter, drills the three. They need a lot more of that if they're going to turn this season around. Frampton started the year 1 for 19 from deep, but in the six games since, shooting about 44%. Walker missed that, and that's going to be, I believe, offensive goaltending. Jemison got up there with the ball on the cylinder, and it's Western Kentucky ball. You mentioned Luke Frampton getting a little bit hotter from three. That's so important. You know, we, we throw around X Factor a lot, but he is the guy when you're talking about stretching defense away from Sharp. Also then taking pressure off of McKnight when he's knocking down threes. This Hilltoppers team is so much better offensively. And now 1,089 consecutive games with a three uh -oh. as Cameron Justice makes it a one-point game. Back-to-back -back threes for the Hilltoppers. This is the offense that Rick Stansberry envisioned and that we saw in games against Louisville and Ole Miss which Western Kentucky won. But this offense works when those two guys are making threes. When Justice and Frampton are knocking down threes, this is one of the harder offenses to stop. Ertle jitterbugging his way into the hoop. Well, he is crafty when he gets into the paint. That's a guy who comes off the bench that can give you 20 a game. That's how deep this UAB team is. Frampton throws it up. Sharp tosses it back out. That was a good decision by Sharp. You know, not forcing a difficult shot. McKnight, the scoop off glass, no good. Taven Lovin pushing it for UAB. Past Sharp, and he blocks it at the rim, but a foul is called. It's the best way to get into the game, is get your shooters into the game. Justice. Knocks down the three. All of a sudden, we got a game. It's the amazing thing about the three-point shot. And then Ertl making it work in the paint. UAB with a three-point lead on Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers have the seven-foot-five Jamarion Sharp. He's the focus of tonight's O'Donnell rules from my buddy, my partner, my pal, Mike O'Donnell. Pull him away from the rim by putting in as many screening actions, pick and rolls at the top of the key, keep him away from the bucket. You want to get into his body that limits his vision and timing for blocking shots and send him to the moon with those pump fakes. Great shot blockers want to do what? They want to block shots. So pump fake, send him to the moon, go through. This was pregame tonight. That's Mike on the left, little shorty over there. That's me on the right. Wow. Now I'm 6'1 and a half, 6'2. Mike's about 5'11. Look how much shoes are on Jamaria. And, and Jamaria on Sharp's a little bit behind me, too. Okay, first of all, my pediatrician tells me that I'm above average, of average height <laughs> for an American male, so slow down with the shorty stuff. Now, next to him, anybody looks short. Incredibly nice. It was re re really great to talk to him briefly before the game. Yeah, it was nice. He's going to be really, really good in the next few years, just still learning how to play. Yeah, Rick Stansbury was saying, you know, in, in, in high school, he rarely ever got off the bench. He just didn't, he, he didn't have that much uh, basketball acumen. Picked it up late, didn't have a lot of skill. Even his, his years in junior college, he didn't play that much. So it's a lot of teaching this season, and he's learning quickly. I love Coach uh, uh, Zach Greenwell, the sports information director for West Kentucky, told me when he got into his dorm, the dorm room staff had to extend his bed when he moved in because the bed wasn't big <laughs> enough. And he's still learning how to be comfortable walking on campus, seven foot five, everybody's looking at you, but he's becoming more comfortable. He's adjusting, more importantly, he's adjusting to be a being a focal point of opposing team scatter reports. That's something that's brand new for him. Mentioned at the top six NBA scouts are here tonight. Check out Jelly Walker for UAB and definitely Jamari on Sharp for the Hilltoppers. Frampton is feeling it. Both of his three-pointers tickling twine. Western Kentucky picked apart that three-quarter court trap really well. Now Lovin, guarded by Anderson, will fade away. Too strong. Western Kentucky, a chance 
to take the lead for the first time tonight. Anderson driving in, tough shot, good help defense from Jemison. You said it, Chris. I'm just so impressed with Trey Jemison. He plays so hard and times up his contests without fouling. That's a, that's a skill. Jelly Walker on the bench right now, still hasn't scored for the Blazers. Coming off that career-high 36 points and an offensive foul. You saw Rick Stansberry in the background there with the fist bump. I imagine he's pretty happy with the way things have transpired after they started one for seven from the floor. They go on an 8-0 run and now another chance to take the lead. That's a point of emphasis for the referees on those dribble handoffs. You can't just roll right in to the, uh, to the defender. That's going to be a moving screen every time. It's a good call by the referee. Knight trying to get around Lovin now fades away from the baseline. That's a real tough shot and a strong board from Josh LeBlanc Sr. Ertl around the screen from LeBlanc. A little scoop. Oh, yes. That is a crafty vet. That's a Steve Nash push layup. I call that a push layup because you almost have to push the ball in underneath the defender. Ertl has seven, and here comes Tony. Tony! Tony! The reserve getting some playing time, averages four points a game. That was allowed, too. Definitely Conference USA all-name team for Tony. Tony, that is going to be a turnover as Jalen Butts lost control of it. Tony, the steal and the run out. It's top three in the country in steals UAB. And Tony, Tony almost on his head. That was vicious. Woo. And he's getting some love from the teammates as he comes to the bench. Doesn't get a lot of playing time. Averages about 10 minutes a game. You can't Making take him out after that dunk, Coach. Yeah, you say, can't take boy. him out after that dunk. I saw, I could see his eyes lining that up, and he looked back briefly, just kind of like a sprinter looks back to see who's in second place. That was ferocious. Well, he's just a freshman playing in his second season, played sparingly last season as well. Bright future here with the Blazers. Look at McKnight has to chase Walker all over the place. Got a piece of that. Partially blocked by Hamilton. And Frampton going three for three. In and out. Sharp the put back. That's what Sharp does so well. He can rim race. We talk about his height and length, but he's very fast going rim to rim. His first basket of the game. Most of his points come via the dunk. Second in the country in dunks coming into this game with 48. There's a great pass from Jelly Walker. Justin Brown picks up the dribble, Lovin with two on the shot clock. Swatted away by Sharp, and that's a shot clock violation. The nation's leading shot blocker playing both ends. Jamarian Sharp rim racing down the floor, seven foot five, keeping the play alive. Put back dump, we got a good one. Cameron Justice, the subject of tonight's player profile, brought to you by State Farm. Five points for the Hilltoppers early on in this one. Cameron Justice, he wasn't sure if he was going to play this season. As you mentioned it before, he's playing for his third school, Vanderbilt, IUPUI, Western Kentucky, worked in sales for returning back to Western Kentucky as a grad assistant, and then he was granted that extra year of eligibility on November 10th, and the Perry Ellis of Conference USA, Cameron Justice. And then on November the 13th, married Kaylee Justice. That was her maiden name as well. It was a Justice Justice wedding. The very next day, Cameron drove to South Carolina to play in his first game since March of 2020 after being cleared for an additional year of eligibility. Tried the sales job, said, you know what? This just isn't as fun as playing college basketball. Especially when you get to play in front of this crowd at EA Diddle Arena. It's one of my favorite arenas in college basketball. Some of the smartest basketball fans I've ever been around. Love calling games 
of West Kentucky. Ditto, and they love their Hilltoppers, one of the top time, uh, top 10 all-time winningest programs in college basketball. Justice able to track that down before the steal. You cannot have soft dribbles against this press, whether you think it's a trapping press or just a denial press. Good entry to Anderson, who lays it in. Nice set by Coach Stansberry coming out of the timeout. Got a little back screen. UAB had a nine-point lead earlier in this game. Western Kentucky went on an 8-0 run. They've been knocking on the door ever since. Jelly Walker is on the board. His first bucket of this game after starting 0 for 3. Anderson, big Euro step. That'll be a goal tag. How about Anderson getting to the basket now three times? Well, I love the fact that Josh Anderson is such a pivotal part of this team. And he comes off the bench. This is a guy who could start at most teams in the country. And that's clearly goaltending. No question about it. Josh Anderson, he's 21st on the all-time West Kentucky scoring list. Scored over 1,300 career points. Phenomenal career. Ertle, wide left. Sharp clears the rebound. Another chance for the toppers to take their first lead tonight. Justice out to Hamilton, uses the head fake, the flyby. Doesn't get the roll, but Frampton, the rebound. Justice tosses it to Sharp, who missed the bunny. And now Jelly Walker, look at the hesitation and lay in. That's just a sample of how fast Jordan Walker is. It is ridiculous speed. The best thing about his game is that he's so fast, but he ne is never sped up. Nobody can speed him up. Justice out to Anderson. He's been good from deep of late. That one bricks. Jemison the rebound. He got to lay it up there. That was a wide open layup. Walker again. Long two. Too strong. And sharp. Falling down to the floor. Finds his teammate. Justice to tie it up. Jemison, another rebound inside. He has five boards now. Coach Stansberry signaling, hey, we got, we got to turn this thing around here. We got to get it moving on offense. It can't just be one shot on each possession, one pass or one dribble and a shot. Make UAB work. Oh, look at Quan Jackson right around Sharp, who gets called for the goaltend. And he wouldn't have gotten that shot off if he didn't shoot it with his left hand. Going to Left the right. Left hand on the right side, too, which is goes against what you're taught as a kid. But you, well, but now the game has evolved, and you need to get that shot up quicker. If you use your left hand, that's your hand closest to the rim mm -hmm. on the right side, and it kind of takes away the timing of sharp on that block. See, I always use my right hand on the left side. Well, you're fundamentally if I, if, sound. If I that's the way you were what, taught. But this is also the, not, not the 1970s anymore. <laughs> Darius Hamilton backing down Lovin. Just can't get the roll. Sharp fighting for that rebound. And it's going to be UAB basketball. Hey, coming up in March, it's the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. We've got the conference semis on March the 5th, followed by the conference championship game March 6th. Get ready for Arch Madness, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament presented by State Farm. Always one of the more entertaining tournaments in college basketball as Jelly Walker does it again. Smooth, efficient, fast, almost impossible physically to stay in front of Jelly Walker. McKnight draws contact, and he'll get to the free throw line. Well, Jelly so Walker shifting. started 0 for 3, but three quick buckets here in the last three or four minutes. A quick change of speed and just blows by Sharp on that ball screen action. And on the other end, McKnight displays his shiftiness. Yeah, it's been a slow start tonight for McKnight. Hasn't been able to find the shot 0 for 4 from the floor. Gets on the board with that free throw to snap a 6-0 run for Andy Kennedy, Jelly Walker, and company. But Jordan Walker didn't score until McKnight went to the bench. Until McKnight went to the bench and, and Anderson went on Walker, that's when Walker got his first bucket. McKnight, 
is it going to change how hard he plays, whether he scores 20 or he scores zero points, as long as he's doing his job on the defensive end? And that's why he's a team leader on this team as a sophomore. Walker snaps into a quick three and drills it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. You want to talk about a player who is absolutely flame throwing in the last few games, coming off the win at Louisiana Tech where he hit nine threes. Look out. McKnight, jump ball, and it's UAB basketball on the alternating possession. Jelly Walker now has nine. It's a guy who two games ago set his career high, 27 points against FAU. Then went out in their biggest game of the season at Louisiana Tech, a team that had won 18 straight home games and scored a career high again, 36. Until about three games ago, I would say player of the year in Conference USA is Kenneth Lofton Jr. But right now it's tied between Jordan Walker and Kenneth Lofton Jr. He can get his shot, can he? Out of bounds to Western Kentucky, but Jelly Walker has the Blazers up by eight. You better get to know Jordan Walker's name when he's making plays like this around the rim. And oh, by the way, flame throwing from three. He's got the Blazers up eight. Well, it was a one-point game, 18-17, with 7.30 to go, and then Jelly Walker started cooking for the Blazers. Nine points over the last three-plus minutes. Sometimes it only just takes one shot to go down, and that first shot went down when Davion McKnight was on the bench. Josh Anderson really didn't have an answer for Walker, and they had to get McKnight in the game quickly, because as soon as Walker knocks one shot down, this is absolutely a kid who can give you 30 anytime he steps onto the floor. Was held off the scoreboard the first 10, 12 minutes of this game. But just snaps into it quickly with nine, and now UAB's built an eight-point lead. And he's still getting comfortable with this system. You have to remember, he's playing for his fourth head coach in his collegiate career. Started his career at Seton Hall a couple years at Tulane with two different coaches, Mike Dunleavy and then Ron Hunter. Now Andy Kennedy, so he's just finding his stride in this offense. Scary to think about. And doing a good job guarding Davion McKnight on the defensive end as well. McKnight hasn't made a field goal yet. Hamilton, corner three. Western Kentucky's missed six straight. Loving out to Ertl. Now they'll set up the offense here. The re-key, the look from the other side of the floor. Andy Kennedy calling out the play. Ten on the shot clock. Walker, long deuce. Got 11. Yeah, this is a very dangerous time for the Hilltoppers because when a player hits a jumper like that and you can see his jog back, you're getting close to being in the zone. Really close. I can almost feel it. And Rick Stansbury said, if he gets to 25 tonight, we might as well not even show up because we're not going to have a chance to win. Hey, coming up on AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, while the Zerbiak, Chris Walker, Seth Davis getting you caught up on all the latest college basketball news and highlights. Several top-ranked teams in action tonight. And, of course, we've got number two, Gonzaga, coming up after us. No call as Frampton finds McKnight, who finds Sharp for the flush. Just need to throw it up anywhere around the rim. We don't talk enough about Sharp's timing on alley-oops. He really does catch everything. There's Walker, another open three. It's good. I told you. I told you. I saw it on the jog back. He's feeling it. All right, what do you do if you're Western Kentucky? You have to face guard him. You have to double him. You have to do whatever you can to get the ball out of his hands. Hamilton, good spin to the hoop. That's a great move. Let's see if Western Kentucky switches up the defense. If you don't give great scores different defensive looks, they're going to carve you up. You have to keep those guys guessing. Walker looking for the shot again. This time, Western Kentucky clears the miss. 
Show and go. And now the fans trying to urge the Hilltoppers back into this thing. That's offensive. And it is an offensive foul. Michael Ertl whistled for it. Ooh. Walker guessed wrong. And now Western Kentucky has some momentum. They've made their last three shots. They were down by as many as 11 moments ago. Critical last 79 seconds of this first half. This is a time where you'll most likely see Western Kentucky go into some ball screen action. That's where McKnight really excels at manipulating the defense. Sharp with the handoff to Cameron Justice. They had him. And there he is, but he couldn't make the grab on the lob. Walker stepped out of bounds. Western Kentucky ball with 102 to go here in the first. They got the right action. That pick and roll was sharp. It worked. Justice actually came off a down screen right into a pick and roll. It's just a bad pass through it way behind Sharp. Don't throw it away from the rim. Throw it close to the rim. It could be a bad pass close to the rim. Sharp's going to get it. Don't make him go backwards. Justice in the corner. And Jemison, his seventh rebound of this first half. About a 15-second difference shot and game clock. Walker around the Jemison screen. He'll pass it inside to Jemison. Muscles it up no good. Gets his own miss. It's Western Kentucky ball, and only a .6 second difference. So Western Kentucky, for all intents and purposes here, can hold for the last shot. And they'll hold it as close as they can to the final shot. And, and Coach Stansbury runs really good stuff coming out of timeouts. This game is tight because Western Kentucky is starting to get locked in. All right, you're Rick Stansberry. You're on a little mini run. You've cut an 11-point deficit down to six, and you, you pretty much have the last shot of the half. What are you drawing up? Well, two things you have to be ready for. One, to run the play that you want, which is probably you're going to get sharp into ball screen action. UAB hasn't defended it that well yet. Two, you have to be ready for secondary action because UAB is known for mixing up their defense. Ball screen play first. If that blows up, if UAB goes to a trapping or zone situation, you're going to have to adjust with the secondary offense. They're looking at this to make sure it's a three. Clearly it looked like Jelly was behind the line. And I don't uh, I don't think there's any way you you overturn that. Definitely behind the line. You, Clear. you, could, you yeah. could put a whole stack of Gene Steratore note cards between that foot and the line. Big Gene Steratore shout out of Conference got, USA basketball, that's big. Well, hey, we got the AFC Championship game coming up, 3 o'clock Eastern on CBS this Sunday. Bengals and Chiefs. And after we're done here tonight in Bowling Green, Kentucky, it's number two Gonzaga hosting Loyola Marymount, 11 Eastern tonight. Shot clock is still on, but it's just a six tenths of a second difference. They're going to bring this shot clock down about 10 seconds here. Tony, Tony there guarding Sharp. McKnight. And there's the screen from Sharp, the roll. McKnight, the dish. Sharp had it blocked away by Lovin. No foul call. The fans can't believe it. Rick Stansbury's out at midcourt. There looked like a ton of contact on this. That has to be a foul. Wasn't called by the officiating crew of Gary Maxwell, James Breeding, and Jeb Hartness. AT&T 5G at the half coming up next with the Blazers on top after one.
might have noticed the score changed in the last few seconds of the first half. That's because they were reviewing that Jelly Walker clear three-point shot. They originally called it a two, changed it to a three. So seven-point lead for UAB as we get set to start the second half. Mike O'Donnell, Chris Hassel with you. Jelly Walker was held scoreless for the first 12 minutes of this game. And then he goes off for 14 points in a five-minute, 15-second span. I love what the Hilltoppers did defensively in the first 10 minutes of the game. They put Davion McKnight on him, and they put him in a face guard scenario, and everybody else sat in the zone. It was like a diamond in one zone. And, and Walker just went off 14 points in that first half. And it wasn't just the threes. He was doing it around the rim as well. 16 points in the paint for UAB, 14 for Western Kentucky. You take a look, the Hilltoppers with those seven turnovers, three or four of those, Chris, totally unforced, not coming from the press for UAB. Yeah, really, when you look at the stats, there isn't one thing that really jumps out other than the field goal percentage. UAB shooting 47%, Western Kentucky just 34%, and they're down seven here to start this second half after what we thought was a pretty clear missed call at the end of the first half on a sharp dunk attempt that wasn't called. I also want to, I want to mention Davion McKnight only had four points in that first half. Them being only down seven points with McKnight only scoring four in the first half, I'd say you're in pretty good position to make a little run here in the second half. But can't do that. Another unforced turnover. As Luke Frampton says, that's my fault, bad pass. Their pick and roll action is good. It's there. The passes are not on time and on target for Sharp. And that's why he only has four points so far in this game. KJ Buffin is back in, picked up those two quick fouls, only played three minutes in the first half. Sharp. Challenge that, no call. Shemison right into him, got to call that as Sharp. Whoa, we're going to call Traveling. Sharp came over the top with the arms, but Traveling called before that. I love what Jemison did, went right into, as you see the block by Sharp. Jemison is always so active, so aggressive. It was a great pass, a great block. Sharp really does have good timing, but Jemison went right into the chest. If he didn't travel, he was getting a foul call. Hamilton head fake off a screen from Sharp. Still continuing to struggle with his shot. Hamilton one for seven in this game. And he's had some good looks. Walker, look how quick he is. Nobody more explosive, according to Rick Stansbury, says he's one of the more explosive players with the basketball he has ever seen. Hamilton driving strong and gets the roll. That is a tough as nails, high degree difficulty shot. It seems like Western Kentucky's had to fight more for their baskets where Jordan Walker can just, in, in a snap of a finger, get one. Sharp with good defense, but Lovin gets it, gets fouled, and it goes in! Lovin got hit in the face. He'll count the shot. And UAB a chance to take a double-digit lead again. It was initially good defense by Sharp, but too much, too much of the body Getting into Lovin. Good show for sportsmanship by Sharp, making sure Lovin's okay. Bit of a homecoming of sorts for Taven Lovin and his family. His mom and dad both played basketball here at Western Kentucky. He's a Kentucky native from Franklin, just down the road. Second team all conference USA last season. Now one of the very few holdovers from Coach Eason's staff before Andy Kennedy took over. Western Kentucky, one of the best, actually the best, in fouls per game. He's only committed a couple fouls so far tonight. McKnight, tough angle. Hamilton, rebound, shuffles it to Sharp. That time, the Hilltoppers got the ball into the paint. That's what you have to do against this UAB defense. Easy to say, really hard to do. 
Lovin backing down Frampton. Got it stripped away, but Jemison's there. Ten on the shot clock. Jackson to the rack. Jackson did a phenomenal job of using his body as a shield to prevent Sharp from coming over the top. Man, what a play. Crowd quiet. Get it into Hamilton. That clearly was a key discussion at halftime from Rick Stansbury to get it into Hamilton inside. But Jackson, as you said, Mike, using the hoop as a protector. And you saw his right arm, right, act as an extension of his body for a shield. He didn't extend his arm into Sharp. He just put it straight up in the air, didn't move it. That's a heady play. Jemison takes his seat with his second foul. So Buffin, Jemison, and Ertl all with two fouls for UAB. Meantime, Western Kentucky's only committed a couple fouls as a team. Sharp steps out of bounds. But that's Hamilton's fault. You can't throw it low. You can't throw it high enough against Sharp. Don't throw it low underneath the rim. Throw it up, aim for the top of the square on the backboard when you're throwing it up to Sharp. Nobody else can get it except for him. Ninth turnover, second of the second half. Lovin misses, and Hamilton the rebound. McKnight didn't have numbers, Jeez. didn't matter. Davion McKnight, more shiftiness than a Ferrari. This kid is just <laughs> dynamic. See if that gets him going now, just his second basket of this game. He has six. Jackson around a couple screens, got it blocked by Sharp, who saves it into Justice. What a pass and finish from Hamilton! The seed from Justice. And Andy Kennedy wants a timeout. Jordan Walker's upset at his team because giving up breakaway dunks. Holy cow! West Kentucky's back in this thing from a dime and a dunk. Look at Hamilton. Western Kentucky's trailed the whole way tonight. They are down six early on in the second half. Hey, tomorrow night here on CBS Sports Network, we've got a great battle in the MAC and in the state of Ohio in particular. Akron at Toledo tip-off right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Toledo leading the way, 8-1. Akron a game and a half back. Mike, you've seen both teams. You better pay attention to the Toledo Rockets. 16-4, 8-1 in conference. They just beat Ohio at Ohio and get to know the name Ryan Rollins of Toledo getting 20 points a game. He dropped 26 at Ohio in a hostile environment and completely outplayed potential player of the year in the MAC, Mark Sears. Ryan Rollins is a budding star at Toledo and in the MAC. You 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 love good offense? Watch that game. Let's see what Andy Kennedy drew up in that timeout. After Western Kentucky threw down a dunk, got the crowd into it. Buffing the drop for LeBlanc, who lost it. Western Kentucky ball. And now we hit the under 16 timeout here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, about an hour and 15 minutes north of Nashville. UAB 41, Western Kentucky 35, with 15.44 to go here in the game as we take a closer look at some plays we love. Brought to you by Marco's Pizza. Tony, Tony, a name we love with a stuff in the first half. And he let us know about it. And then Jarius Hamilton with a throwdown of his own for the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky has made three consecutive shots. They've trailed by as many as 11 tonight. They've trailed the whole way. Got the ball down six. Definitely all-name team, Tony Tony in Conference USA. Got to be all-name team in the country as well. Yeah. 
Anderson guarded by Jelly Walker. And now Sharp over to McKnight. Anderson will cut. Justice open for three. KJ Buffin runs it down for the Blazers. It was a good look, exactly what they wanted. Just didn't hit the shot. Oh, Walker, what a great hook pass to LeBlanc, who almost throws it away. Ertl, long two. There's Hamilton in on Buffin. Hamilton still struggling with the shot. Three for ten tonight. If you're going to spin in the post, don't fade away with your offhand. you got to go into the body. Got away with one there, leaving Ertl wide open. Justice rips that one away from Buffin. Fans wanted a foul. Instead, it's five on three. Alley up, shark the stuff. <laughs> Western Kentucky on a 6-0 run. Had it poked away. Sharp the outlet. Justice to Anderson. It's an 8-0 run. And a stoppage in play. Timeout called by Rick Stansberry. And having a discussion here. I don't know if he didn't want that timeout. Seemed like an odd time for a Western timeout with all the momentum and the fans into it. He's cr clearly trying to plead his case right now. This was a great run by the Hilltoppers. This is the kind of Conference USA basketball that I love. Stay with us. Back here live, Western Kentucky within two on an 8-0 run over the last 2.30. And here's that last play, a great feed from Justice to Sharp. And then, I don't know if it was an inadvertent timeout from Rick Stansbury, he was not happy with the officials, but it was a 30-second timeout, which kind of quieted the crowd again. What's well, been transition offense for the Hilltoppers that's ignited their run? And they get another steal. Good hands by Justice. And now Justice. Western Kentucky has never led. They've had several chances to take the lead. Anderson looking to tie it. And does! He'll have a chance to take the lead at the line. Anderson does a great job getting downhill, little spin cycle, and then the strength and finesse to finish it for the iron one. The bench loves it. And three fouls now on Ertl. Still can't take that elusive lead. Jemison and Buffin are arguing with each other right now. We've also seen Walker really get into his teammates be upset this is an emotional uab team right now Jackson. Jackson. The carry. gets to the hoop swatted away anderson with the head up justice pump fake and they throw it away anderson able to chase it down then gets it stolen by jackson walker transition three Missed it. And now here comes Anderson the other way. And a foul is called at the hoop. A frenetic back and forth between Conference USA rivals. Those last possessions look like Saturday morning back-to-back -back AAU games. Let's see if this was, oh boy, I think that was goaltending. That was really, really close. It was close. Well, Sharp now has five blocks. He's moved past Charles Bassey now, second in all-time single-season blocks for wow. Western Kentucky with 88. What an incredible accomplishment. <laughs> and this run for Western Kentucky, a lot of it's come in transition, which is even more impressive because UAB's transition defense is really, really good. They had the seventh most efficient transition defense in the country. Teams only have 
a 36% chance of scoring in transition. If you want to know, is that low? Yeah, that's really, really low. And Western Kentucky taking full advantage of uncharacteristically bad transition defense for the Blazers. You talk about uncharacteristic. Josh Anderson, 83% free throw shooter, just had three chances to give Western Kentucky their first lead of the game. Missed all three of them at the line. Lovin missed it. Their Pogo sticking up and down. Jemison saving it in the corner. Jackson gets the road bounce. How physical is this game? This is great. Well, they had a great back and forth in the Conference USA semifinals last season. Western Kentucky eking out a victory. Teams have alternated wins and losses each of the last seven meetings. Tony Tony back in as Quan Jackson takes a seat. Western Kentucky staying in the game, going on a little bit of a run with McKnight on the bench. There's Hamilton. Had trouble with it, and it's a charge. He was a little bit out of control, looking down at that ball, trying to corral it. And a tough couple of minutes for Anderson, who misses three straight free throws, and now gets called for the charge. Blazers by two. Vote today. With just under 12 minutes to go, let's take a look at tonight's game. Summary brought to you by AT&T 5G. And Western Kentucky has gotten back in this game in the second half because they're 7 of 11 from the floor, now shooting better than UAB tonight on the whole. And Anderson's really gotten going as well. He's got 10 points, and he's done it in a variety of ways. This is a player who's coming off the bench that could be starting for any team in Conference USA. He's had an incredible career, and when West Kentucky looked like they were going to get out of this game, that things were looking UAB's way, Anderson stepped up and made that huge and one around the rim. Big time play from an all-time Hilltopper. He's played the seventh most games of any Hilltopper in history. He's been here all the way since the 2017-18 uh, season, coming out of high school as a consensus four-star, top 75 recruit. And he's also gotten better every single year, especially shooting the basketball. 14% from three his freshman year, 29% his junior year. Now he's over 40% from three. That was an ugly miss from K.J. Buffin, who just can't get his footing tonight. He's one for five from the floor, two points in 11 minutes with that early foul trouble, but playing great defense. The steal, the take, in on Sharp, and draws the foul. That's what I mean when we talk about those O'Donnell rules. Going into the body of Sharp actually blinds him. It messes up the timing of his blocking ability. Because you're so close to him, he can't see. That was, a, that was such a great defensive play by Buffin, and an even better offensive play of not being afraid of the shot blocking prowess of Sharp. Makes the first free throw. Had a great game at uh, Louisiana Tech. Andy Kennedy called his play marvelous down the stretch. 11 points, 13 rebounds in that victory down in Ruston. And so UAB kind of weathered that storm a little bit. Western Kentucky looked like they were going to take the lead. Anderson gets to the hoop again. Wow. Right in on the freshman Tony Tony. How lethal is that spin move? Because he, he can do it whether he's going 50 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. He's got great body control. And now Lovin into the paint. Oh, almost traveled. Almost turned it over. Jemison missed it. Buffin had it poked away, and Frampton has the basketball. Boy, this is a critical game for both of these teams. Western Kentucky's lost three in a row, trying to turn their season around. And UAB, for as great as they have been this season, they really need this victory tonight. Anderson with a great take. He has 12 now. And I say need, and I mean that in an at-large sense. 
because of where Western Kentucky's net is, this would be either a quad two or a quad three loss, as we talked about at the start. This is not a, a quad two, quad three challenge for UAB. This is a quad one challenge, but it's going to go down as a, a quad two or three defeat if they don't win it. And they don't have any more quadrant one opportunities left in conference play. Well, they're going to call Tony there for the flop. The Conference USA absolutely could be a multi-big league. Is We're going to get a little bit of a flop warning. Yep. I'm okay with that call. I'm telling you right now, if, if they had the flop warning back when I played. Oh, were you king flopper? I wouldn't say king. I'd probably say prince, though. Prince flopper? Yeah, prince flopper. Well, it didn't take much to knock you down. That's one Five, of the meanest things you've ever said to me. It's just a kidney punch into my soul. No, I say that as a guy who couldn't even make his freshman high school basketball team. And it makes me feel a little bit better. Western Kentucky down by two. Coming up on the 10-minute mark. Justice has it poked away. Quan Jackson, top 10 in the nation in steals, comes up with another. <laughs> Coach Kennedy calls Quan Jackson Revis Island. He's like a quarterback. It's just a ball getter. Whether it's passing, intercepting passes, deflecting dribbles. He's one of the best defenders in Conference USA. In my opinion, he's one of the best defenders in the country. And now he is over 300 steals for his career. Walker wheels around, hits it, but it's an offensive wow. foul called the kick on Walker, which is another point of emphasis in college basketball. If you kick your leg out, make contact with the other player, you're going to get called for it. He seems to think maybe that was the right call, and, and definitely it was. That's the Trey Young rule. It's the Trey Young and James Harden rule. Throw it up. Oh, it hit the rim. Nice pass And here's pass Jackson. Ahead. Lays it in past Hamilton. That was such a great pass ahead by Jordan Walker. Walker only two points in this second half, but a big seed there as UAB builds the lead to four once again. Justice around Lovin. Change of pace is so hard to guard. It's easy to guard a player if you go one speed the whole time. Love that change of speed, change of pace by Justice. No help defense for UAB on that. They were completely out of position. Buffin, good nice drop pass. for LeBlanc. Just carving up that zone. I know Coach Stansberry's trying to mix it up, really trying to give Jordan Walker a lot of different looks. I think they're better in man-to-man. -man. UAB has a harder time of getting into the paint when Western Kentucky's in man. Hamilton. Boy, just can't find it. 3 for 11 now from the field, 0 for 4 from outside. David Lovin cocks it and rocks it. And Anderson tries to answer. It's a charge. This was absolutely vicious by Lovin. Actually briefly loses the basketball. Look at this. Unbelievable. Now between Lovin and Anderson, we've got two of the most powerful dunkers we've ever seen in conference. No USA. question. No question. UAB back up six. Walker double teamed. Now Buffin. And they're going to get a foul inside. I'm not, I'm not sure who it's on. Uh, Sharp. Is going to be called for that foul, I believe. I don't. I don't think now he might have been fouled. I don't think it was by Sharp. I don't think it was by Sharp either. The foul's on Justice because there's clearly a hand check. Sharp the, got all ball. The foul should have been on Justice. And that that's a play, that's a play that Justice has to know. Like if you you want to get yourself out of the way when you've got literally the best shot blocker in the country, as Davion McKnight checks in. You've got the best shot blocker in the country. Don't bail out. 
an offensive player. Make him challenge Sharp. That's the third foul on Sharp. One of two for Buffin. Man, Western Kentucky, 9 of 14 in this second half, but they haven't taken anything off this deficit. Hamilton. That's going to count. At the eight minute mark, Jarius Hamilton. Tough shooting night, but still taking it to the rack like Taven Lovett. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by G. There's only one. Good atmosphere tonight. EA Dental Arena for the blackout. Western Kentucky looking to snap a three-game losing skid. Really pivotal game for them to try to turn their season around. They are 10 of 15 in this second half, but they still trail by five. Mike, what needs to change for them to finally get over the hump? get their first lead of the night and win this game in the final eight minutes. Their best half-court offense is the pick and roll with Sharp. They need better passing to Sharp on the pick and roll because UAB's help defense isn't there. It's kind of fool's gold defensively for UAB because of how open Sharp has been. That pick and roll action has been on point in terms of execu executing the roll. It hasn't been on point in terms of executing the pass. That's Mike O'Donnell. I'm Chris Hassel. Jarius Hamilton, a chance to convert the three-point play. Western Kentucky 0 for 4 at the line in this second half. And Jordan Walker only has two points in the second half. Western Kentucky's done a really good job of slowing him down in the second half. Lovin for three. Jamison, the offensive rebound. Going right at Sharp with those three fouls. The jump hook, no. The tip, no. And finally, McKnight clears it for Western. Hamilton drops it off for Sharp, who gets clobbered. And Sharp is only 52% at the line on the season. He's been much better of late. This is good transition offense again for the Hilltoppers. A nice dump down by Hamilton. I am shocked at how often Western Kentucky is taking advantage of UAB's poor transition defense. Blazers are one of the top teams in the country in not allowing points in transition D. Lovin, LeBlanc, check out for UAB. Sharp. He's trying to go one of two here. And does. First made free throw of the second half. Now one for six. And that Violation. is going to be a turnover. That's the sixth second half turnover for UAB. They lead the nation in turnover margin. They're still plus four tonight. Anderson again gets it swatted by Jemison. Straight up and fouled. Anderson fixed his mistake. He tried to challenge Jemison one-on-one -on -one without ball faking. Got his offensive rebound, immediately went to the ball fake and got the foul drawn. And we'll see if he can bounce back now after three straight free throw misses. He's always been one of the top free throw shooters in Conference USA, 83% coming into the night. Finally sees one fall through. And one more here with 7.23 to play. Western Kentucky in the Conference USA East Division. Two games out of first to begin the night. UAB part of a three-way tie atop the Conference USA West to begin, tonight, uh, begin the night. They're 6-1. Louisiana Tech and North Texas also 6-1. Ertl playing with four fouls. Jemison, oh, just used that wide body, that strength to go in on Sharp. That was seven foot going at seven foot five, and Jemison's footwork was outstanding. Good patience, good job playing the angle. 
And Rick Stansbury says he's seen it time and time again this season. The, the big man on the other team going up against Sharp, who doesn't get talked about going into the game, tends to have a great game against the big man because of that motivation factor. You saw that at Florida Atlantic. Hamilton way short on that three. And UAB a chance to build once again. Up by four. Walker, the jump stop, gets it swatted by Sharp. Block number six on the night. Anderson, a little hesitation, and the take with the one-hand rock. Two-point game coming up on six to go. High-level basketball this evening in Conference USA. Jackson gets through, gets it over the top of Sharp, but missed. Definitely altered that shot. And the Hilltoppers looking to climb that mountain for the first time. Haven't led all night. Stansbury directing traffic from the sideline. McKnight goes left. Curls around, gets it swatted by Jemison. And it's Western basketball, four on the shot clock. Back to that Anderson stuff. What's so impressive about that is it wasn't the fact that, hey, Josh Anderson has a ridiculous vertical leap. He jumped to the side to dunk it to avoid the charge. Oh, man. Hamilton. Has to go, one on the shot clock, Anderson, no good. Another chance to take the lead goes by the wayside. And it's Jordan Walker time for UAB. He's been too quiet in the second half. 14 in the first half, just two so far in the second. Hooks a pass to Buffin, who's wide open. Huge three for K.J. Buffin. The guy who only shoots 20% from three just knocked down a monster deep ball. And then, no way! Frampton right back at you. Wow. Tit for tat. And now Jelly to answer. Look at all those bodies skying up high and now down to the deck. Jump ball, and it'll stay with UAB. How great has this game been? Back to back, big plays, physical. Man. And credit to Western Kentucky, because there were a couple times in that first half where it looked like it could get away. They fell behind nine right yep. off the jump, fought back, fell behind 11 a couple of different times, and fought back at the end of the half. But they fought back that second time with McKnight on the bench, which is even more impressive. Ertl. Got it! Three-pointer! Excellent set design on baseline out of bounds by Coach Kennedy getting one of his lethal three-point shooters a good look in the corner. Time and time again, UAB just responding. We just have so many weapons. We're talking about the depth, but each player is just... Everybody's gifted on the offensive end. McKnight trying to put the moves on, loving. Hamilton rebound, got it. How hard has Jarius Hamilton played tonight? Like a man possessed. Yeah, he's had to fight for those 10 points. Walker blocks from behind, and they call a foul on Anderson. Oh my, and Coach Stansberry looked down on the floor and beside himself. This is back and forth. Conference USA basketball at its best. Having a great time. And Gonzaga's my pick right now to win the national title. I think, I haven't said this on a broadcast ever before. Some other people have in years past, but I think this is Gonzaga's year because of Andrew Nemhart. I think he is that good of a point guard. I think he is the best point guard in the country and the perfect point guard for that Gonzaga team. Maybe the best guard in Conference USA is at the line right now after a controversial call. Jelly Walker looked like he had it blocked by Josh Anderson. A late whistle sends him to the line.
And Rick Stansberry had a long chat with the officials during that timeout. Well, that's the last guy you want on the line of the UAB is 88% second in Conference USA. Makes them both. Walker now with 18 points. The difference right now is the free throw line in the second half for Western Kentucky. They missed their first five free throws, three of them with a chance to give them a lead that they haven't had yet. Anderson corrals it, guarded by Ertl. And now Hamilton Got almost walked. Walk. Sharp, that is not his shot. Anderson tips it over the backboard, UAB ball. It's exactly the shot you want taken if you're UAB. An excellent defensive half-court possession by the Blazers. They blew up the ball screen action, the slip action, and the down screen, and they had their had Sharp take a mid-range jumper in which he never shoots those consistently. Walker gets it back and now works a little bit of clock as we hit the three-minute mark here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Buffin passes one up. Ertl takes it. Jemison tips it. And McKnight corrals. Now McKnight had it go off his leg, it looked like, but it'll stay with Western Kentucky. That's what UAB thought anyway. I'm shocked as well. I, I saw that. From it our angle, like it looked it, like yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, well, I think it might have hit Jemison after it hit McKnight. And you see the reaction from Jemison. Good position. Anderson missed it. Gets it back. Made that shot tougher than it needed to be. And a foul underneath. Who's that going on? Going on UAB. On, that's on Ertl. And he's done. Number five for Michael Ertl. Fouls out with 10 points. They're going to get Quan Jackson checking in for Ertl. It's been physical all night long. Well, these, the, these trips to the free throw line late in the game for Western Kentucky, they're not a deep team. They play six guys a ton of minutes. Free throws act as extra timeouts for Western Kentucky not just from Coach Stansbury's perspective of setting up their defense but or their offense. Well, I understand that, but you're talking about a team, uh, six guys that play a ton of minutes. It's extra breathing time. It allows them to catch their breath. Sure. And set up the pressure if need be. It's a four-point game. Coming up on the two-and-a-half-minute mark. UAB has led the whole way by as many as 11. It was tied once early on in this second half. Buffin missed it. Jemison to the deck, trying to rip it away. Jump ball, Western Kentucky ball. I love watching Trey Jemison play. He's a footer, a seven-footer diving on the floor for a loose ball. This is being a superstar in your role. You don't initially get the board. Look at the big fella dive. <laughs> Come on, how can you not love that? Only has four points tonight, Mike, but to your point, 12 rebounds tying a season high. And though the possession arrow wasn't going his way, could factor in big here in this final two minutes if we get another jump. Four point deficit for the Hilltoppers. McKnight, great drive on Lovin. Two-point game. Two minutes to go. Fans rise as one. Lovin kicks it to Jackson. Shot clock down to four, a lot of dribbling. Jelly's got it, no man's land in the corner. That's a shot clock violation. That was the best defensive half court possession for Western Kentucky in this game. And it came at a pivotal point in the game. Big time defensive stop for the Hilltoppers. See those two coaches going at it. 
So many meetings in the SEC when Andy Kennedy was at Ole Miss. Rick Stansbury was at Mississippi State. Coach Stansbury with a 9-4 edge overall, but he just wants this one tonight. Western Kentucky down by two with the ball, 90 seconds to go. What's the strategy for Rick Stansberry? You got 26 seconds on the shot clock. No need to force something early. They love to get camera justice coming off down screens into a ball screen. Don't be surprised if you see Davion McKnight late in the shot clock go ball screen and try to make something happen. You can feel the referees calling it a little bit tighter. If, if you and I can feel that, that means the players can feel that. Use that to your advantage. Don't take a contested shot earlier in the shot clock. If you're stuck, put your head down, get to the rim, get into the paint. And Western Kentucky is in the double bonus. Two shots from here on out. Only seven team fouls for the Hilltoppers, so just a bonus for the next several fouls for UAB. Western Kentucky has scored 40 of their 60 points in the paint. Anderson, their leading scorer tonight, he has 16. Hamilton with 10, McKnight and Sharp with nine. And McKnight goes to work. Deep two, way off the mark. I don't understand that shot at all. Semi-contested, right at almost 18 feet. And did not touch the rim. This is the matchup right here. Anderson on Walker. Buffin takes it to the elbow, too strong, and McKnight the rebound. 50 seconds to go. Don't need a three. Sharp wanted the lob. Justice for the lead. No, but a foul. And Justice, an 81% free throw shooter, will get three. It's one of the cardinal rules. Don't foul a jump shooter. Clearly a lot of contact on the arm from Walker. Easy call for the referee in perfect position. Gets the first. Western Kentucky has had, by my count, about six or seven times a chance to take the lead tonight. They'll get another one right here. And there's about a 15 second difference shot and game clock for UAB. First lead of the game with 44.7 seconds to go. You know what Coach Stansberry is screaming to his team? Rebound, rebound, no second chance opportunities for UAB. Now they've ran. West Kentucky still sitting in a kind of a myriad of a zone, amoeba-like zone. It's really neutralized Jordan Walker in this second half. Walker with just four points in the second. Finds the open man, and the three from Justin Brown! The transfer from South Florida. They called him downtown Justin Brown. He's a three-point sniper. Wow, what a shot. The officials are looking at that shot from Justin Brown and trying to see whether it was a two or a three. Let's take a look. Left foot behind, right foot behind. Looks like Just a three. Just barely. Just it's barely. A two point lead now for the Blazers. Just a great pass by Jordan Walker. You can see everybody's attention is on him. They don't want him taking a three. They don't want him doing anything other than passing out. And that is the South Florida transfer. Perfect reaction from downtown Justin Brown. That's what he's in the game to do. He's a three point sniper. 48 of his 55 shots this season have been from three-point range. That three in his second minute of game action tonight. Put out there specifically 
for that moment. And now back to the bench with 33 seconds left. That's why UAB is so good. You got guys like Justin Brown, who were starters at South Florida, coming off the bench. And now Western has to respond again against the full court press. Now they back off. McKnight going left, spinning, tossing, stuff from Sharp! Tied up at 65, and the shot clock is off. And a timeout taken by Andy Kennedy with 12.7 to go. Don't forget, top of the hour, number two, Gonzaga hosting Loyola Marymount here on CBS Sports Network. But we got business to finish here. McKnight with the great lob. Just what you said, Mike. When you throw it to Sharp, throw it up at the rim. Always throw it up. Higher the better for seven foot five Sharp. That was such a great play by McKnight, and the bench loves it. How about the high level execution on both sides of those last two possessions? We've seen it all game. This second half has been high level basketball. Ain't nothing mid-major about it. This has been big time hoops we're seeing here I at mean, Western Kentucky. I mean, this has been great back and forth. Now, we got just under 13 seconds left. You've got plenty of time to run your set. And it's, you're not just looking for one particular set. You're looking for multiple actions within a set. So we have so much time on the clock, 12.7's an eternity. You, but you want to take it. You want to take it with as limited time as you can on the clock to not allow Western Kentucky to rebound and a push out. Louisiana Tech's already won tonight, so is North Texas. So UAB needs to win to keep pace with those two teams in the division and keep this three-way tie going as they try to get to seven and one in conference play. UAB ball, they have the possession arrow as well, and they're in the bonus. If you get totally stuck, a bad shot is better than a turnover, and a timeout is better than a bad shot. That's your mentality. Jelly Walker, back-to-back -back Conference USA Player of the Week. 4-3, got it! Four seconds left. McKnight for the tie. It's short, and the Blazers have done it again. Jelly Walker. That was unbelievable guts and ice water by Jordan Jelly Walker. He ran over to us, started slapping the table, and said, get out of here. Get out of here. Go home. He was quiet all second half and then takes an absolute deep dagger for the game winner. And there's the celebration. This UAB team has been emotional all night. And what a victory at Dittle Arena. How about the wins for UAB in conference play? They won at North Texas, the defending conference champion. They won at Louisiana Tech, snapped an 18-game home court winning streak. They're the only team to beat either one of those in conference play. And they come in here to Western Kentucky, perennial power. Toughest place to play in the conference get Western's best shot, fall behind in the final minute, only to steal it at the buzzer. I thought Western Kentucky played great, but UAB just had too many weapons. You take a look at the Conference USA standings, UAB first, Louisiana Tech, North Texas. This is the West Division, and to me, UAB, Louisiana Tech, and North Texas, not just in the West Division, they're the top three teams in Conference USA. And how about UAB handing Louisiana Tech and North Texas their only losses yep. in conference play? I mean, the Blazers continue to build their resume, a net of 38 coming into the night. I don't want to see any bracketologies out there that don't have UAB in the dance right now because they are a tournament to team, 17 and four, seven and one in conference play, and the road wins, incredible.
Let's go back to the game-winning shot by Kelly Walker. You knew he was going to take it. And that was deep. I mean, that was beyond NBA range with six NBA scouts in attendance to watch Jordan Walker hit the game winner for the Blazers. Well, UAB led the whole way until the final minute. Western Kentucky finally got over the hump and took a lead. UAB responded with back-to-back -back threes to win it. For Mike O'Donnell and our entire crew, I'm Chris Hassel. After the break, we're getting you out to Spokane, Washington. Number two Gonzaga, Loyola Marymount, next. <laughs>